Anderson Family. Hi, Pop. How's the show? Just fine. Looks like a good program. Where's your mother? In the bedroom. Crying. Crying? What's wrong? I don't know. She and Martha came home and Mom wouldn't talk to me. Ah, this is silly. I'll speak to her. Go away, Oliver Anderson. Go away? What's wrong? Why didn't you tell me Antoinette Murphy was going to wear spangled tights? And what were you three men doing pushing her around the stage? Look, Mary, it was part of the play. Oh, it was. I suppose it was part of the play when she pleaded with you men to leave her alone. Oh. Uh-oh, here we go again, folks. Now let's visit the Anderson family. Well, this whole thing started when Oliver Anderson volunteered to play a part in the Red Feather Community Chess Play this year. Oliver is always willing to be of any help in raising money for worthy causes, and in fact is impressing that upon Junior's mind this very minute. How did they happen to pick you for a part in the play, Pop? Oh, I don't know. I guess it's because I'm always willing to build up the neighborhood and willing to do my share to make everyone feel like a friend. Butch Chapman said they wanted his father to play in it, but he turned it down. Well, you tell Butch he's out of his head. Chapman doesn't have a voice you can hear past the third row. Does Mom know about it yet, Pop? Well, not yet, but you know how she is. She's like I am. How do you mean? Well, she'll do anything to help out the neighborhood. Well, here's Mom now. Hi, Mom. <sighs> I'm sorry I'm late, Oliver. I had to stop and buy a few things. I'll get dinner on right away. Oh, there's no hurry. What's in that bag, Mom? Cookies? Nope. Keep your hands out of there. Hey, Mom, Pop's in the play this year. Really? How nice. I heard Mrs. Briggs talking to Free Baron about it. Oh, it's just a small part. I play a storekeeper in a Vermont village. It's called Snowbound in Vermont. Mm. Got any good buys and groceries? Well, <laughs> you see, Junior, your mother's a happy woman. I say your mother is a happy woman. I know. I heard you. Oh. Well, I have to have a stand-up collar for the rehearsal tonight, so I'd better run over to Homer's and see if he has one left from his better days. I'm going over next door to Meister's, Mary. Be right back. Oh, you haven't told Homer yet? I'm not going over to Brad. I'm going to get a collar. Oh, it's you. Yeah. Well, is uh, Homer home? I guess so. Come in. I just thought I'd drop over and... Uh... He ain't going out nowhere tonight. I don't want him to go out. Hey, Oliver, come on in. Well, I uh, just thought I'd ask you if you had a stand-up collar. Huh? What, someone getting married? Why, does someone have to get married if I need a stand-up collar? Well, no, but you don't generally wear one. Well, I want to wear it in the play. Play, eh? Yeah. Mm. Well, now, I don't know if I got one or not. You do, too, have one, Homer. What's the use of telling a lie about it? I ain't lying about it. I just thought if they give me a part, I'd need it. Well, the whole play is cast already, Homer. They mm. tell me it's a stinker. Who told you? Chapman the plumber. Said he turned down the main part. He did no such thing, and from what I saw of the play, it's not a stinker. Well, that's the report I got. Well, look now, Martha. We have plays, so everyone will have an interest in it, in the community and the neighbors. I can get along all right without no housewarmings. Mm. Yeah, I'd, I'd hate to be tied up with a bad show. I'm glad you ain't. I guess they ain't going to use any talent this year. Hmm. Why should she act that way? Well, I can see what she means, Oliver. I lean a lot towards the theater, and she knows it. Well, maybe I could get you uh, into the cast. No, nope, I don't want in. To be some little part, and, and I ain't interested. But it's a dramatic piece, Homer. Yep, yep, I know, but I, I go more for melodramy. 
The mellower it is, the better I like it. Hmm. Nope, nope, Oliver, just, just count me out. Well, just thought I'd ask you. Oh, of course, I'll buy a ticket, if it's for a good cause, of course. Antoinette will sure be disappointed. Well, I can't help that. Uh, uh, uh. Antoinette Murphy from mm-hmm. the Jim Cafe? Yep, she's the star. Oh, ho, 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 me. Oh, she is, eh? Yep, and I work well with her, too. Yeah, well, it's funny. She didn't say anything to me about it. Oh, well, the play's not too hot anyhow. Oh, taint the play, Oliver. It's uh, it's the spirit of it. Uh, uh, What time are you going to rehearse? 7.30. Let me have the collar, will you? Well, well, I'd kind of feel like like I'd let Antoinette down if if I didn't do what I could to help. But look, Homer, the leading man must be a younger man. Now, look here, young fella. When a gal's snowbound, she don't ask a man's age, does she? Well, now, I don't care what you do. All I want is a successful play, Homer. Yep, 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 that's right. You know, we should all get together to put this thing over. Ho, 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 me. So, so Aunt Nett's the leading lady, eh? Yeah? Look, yeah. bring the collar with you when you come over, will you? Yep, yep, and I'll be right on the dot. Seven o'clock. Where are you going at seven o'clock? I'm going to help Oliver out. You ain't going out anywhere tonight. You know what I told you. Yeah, well, I'll run on. I imagine you have some things you'd like to talk over. <laughs> hey, I'll be there at seven, Oliver. Okay, I'll wait for you. Thought you wasn't interested in the play. Oh, it ain't the play, Marthy. It's the spirit behind it. You know, Oliver's right. We should all work together. He's just talked you into something again. Oh, no, he ain't. Oliver just showed me where we're all in this together. And anyhow, uh, I might get to play a part. <laughs> oh, hi, Freebairn. Oh, it's you, Anderson. Bought your ticket yet for the play? No, I have not. From what I hear of it, I'd rather just donate the money. Well, it's a lot better play than it sounds. That may be. But I wouldn't get up in front of my neighbors and make a fool of myself for no one. What if everyone said that? Look at that poor kid, Antoinette Murphy. Works at the cafe and then comes over to rehearsal tired as she is. I don't care about that. I, I, I... You mean the little blonde French girl who waits at the two weird tables? Yeah, Antoinette Murphy. I'm a heel, Anderson. Well, no, I wouldn't say that, Freebear. Yes, I am. You're just conservative as all, Briggs. If that little girl could, could take all that time out to do good, I certainly could help out, too. Uh, what time did she come to rehearsal? Well, it's called for 7.30. You may depend on me, Anderson. I'll be there at 7.30. We need more of this sort of thing in the neighborhood. Is that you, Freebear? Yes, my pet. Anyone with you? Oh, dear. Where I've have blown. you been? Now, oh, 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 sweet, I, I was held up by that, that Anderson person across the street. I thought you weren't speaking to him. But I have to be neighborly, sweet. He's in the play, you know. That is of no interest to me. I'm only thankful that you're not. But, Millicent, I think I should cooperate with my friends in the neighborhood and do anything I can to aid them. I won't have it, Free Baron. I won't have it. I have a reason for doing everything, my dear. I shall go forward. Ever forward with the play. Uh, uh, how come nobody else is here at the rehearsal, Oliver? Because we're only rehearsing this one scene, is all. It seems to me she could be on time. I'm tired of waiting until she'll tell her so. Now, take it easy, Free Baron. You're only in here on a transfer, you know. Oh, uh, but dagnabbit, time's a-flying by, and she should be told to get here on time. Oh, oh, here's Antoinette now. Oh, I'm so sorry, boys. Really. Oh, ho, 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 me. Well, that, that, that's all right. We only been here a minute ourselves. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You bring the script, Antoinette? Oh, but yes, of course. Uh, but I do not know how many are to be in these scenes. Oh. Hello, Shorty. Shorty? Oh, 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 oh. Excuse me, Antoinette. This is uh, Mr. Briggs. Have I ever served you? I'm afraid you haven't. But uh, <coughs> I uh, must say, I I think they made a very wise choice in their selection of a, <coughs> a leading lady. <laughs> oh, I thank you so much. You're truly a gentleman. Uh, 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 Antoinette, uh, we sort of changed the play a little bit. Yep, yep. Uh, we're going to have uh, three men in the grocery store scene. <laughs> oh, but how mm. nice. Mm. I wore my dancing costume this evening under my coat. Ooh. Do you like it? <gasps> Bye. How 
days. Oh, boy. Oh, ho, 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 oh. <laughs> Say, that's swell. Bye. Bye. How it, uh, it sparkles. I wore this when I was in vaudeville. Mm. <laughs> but I'm afraid the ladies will object. It is so very... Oh, um, now, gosh, it ain't short at all, Antoinette. Do you think it is too daring? <laughs> I think we need more of this sort of thing. Yep, yep, yep. A whole lot more of it. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, of course, you wouldn't wear it on the street. Now, look, Homer. You stand over there, right. And you, Briggs, stand over there, left. Uh, get that box and stand on it so you look like we do. I resent that remark, Anderson. Oh, oh come right. now, boys. Please, and no fight now. Well, well, now, of course, look here now. Uh, I don't want no trouble neither, but... Uh, now, wait a minute, uh, Homer. Uh, Quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, look. Miss Murphy here... Comes through that center door into the grocery, see? Yep. We step forward as she comes in. Uh. We stare at her wardrobe. <clears throat> and then quickly step forward and put a cape around her before the women of the village see her. <laughs> as we do this, oh she berates us for our snobbishness and begins yep. to cry. Uh. Now, all right, let's uh, go through it a couple of times. Huh? <laughs> Mary Anderson speaking. Mary, this is Martha. Homer's gone off down to that auditorium without his heavy sweater. Will you walk down with me while I take it to him? Well, I don't know, Martha. I was just going to get Junior started on his homework. Well, it won't take but 15 minutes, Mary, and I don't like to be alone at night on the streets. You don't know what might happen to a girl alone like that. Oh, well, all right. But hurry up now. I have a lot of things to do. I'm glad Homer's so interested in neighborhood doings. Mm. Uh, Mary, I think this is the door. You're right, Martha. It is. <gasps> Martha, who is that woman? Why, why, Mary, she ain't got hardly any clothes on. Why, why, I never seen anything like it. It doesn't seem to disturb the boys. Why, I seen that girl before. Homer's got a picture of her in the garage. Look. She's walking toward the side. And look, look, Mary, they're all after her. Why, I never seen the likes in my life. Shh, poor girl. Looks like she's trying to get away from them. Let me alone, all of you. Why can't you act like respectable men? Go home to your own fireside. Am I to be molested by every moron in town? Uh, Martha, maybe we'd better go. I think I've seen all I care to see. The only difference between you and me, Mary, is I'm gonna do something about it. And now, back to the Andersons. Public-spirited Oliver Anderson has a part in the community play but his enthusiasm for the project was not shared by Homer Meister or Free Baron Briggs until Oliver told them that Antoinette Murphy, the waitress at the Gem Cafe, was playing the lead. Whereupon Homer and Briggs immediately decided to lend their talents in making the production a success. Martha persuaded Mary to walk to the auditorium to take Homer's sweater to him, and unobserved by the cast, got a glimpse of Oliver, Homer, and Briggs in rehearsal with Antoinette who was dressed in a very scanty dancing costume. Oliver is now at home explaining to Junior. Uh, now, now, look, Junior, I was merely helping Briggs and Homer put a cape around her shoulders, just as the script called for. Oh, we discussed that, Pop. That isn't what Mom is upset about, believe me. Well, then I don't get the icy reception. She could have come down there with me if she wanted to. Well, I'm not taking sides, because that ain't nice. But I know if I were going to do a play like that, I'd have it understood before the panic hit. But there's no panic. And I didn't see the script. How could I tell her? And I think that uh, making a neighborhood one big friend is the thing that threw her, Pop. She knows there isn't anything like that in this neighborhood. Okay, let her act this way. Do you think I was interested in this Antoinette Murphy? I'd have let uh, Briggs and Homer wedge in on a part, huh? Methinks the man protesteth too much. Mm. I think that, well, that's what Mom said. Well, surely you don't see anything wrong in my taking a part in the play, do you? No. I guess anyone would have done that. Anyhow, Homer and Briggs were both out in front of me with a cape. I think the important thing to Mom is the fact that you dragged Mr. Meister and Mr. Briggs down with you. Look, I didn't drag anyone. They insisted upon doing the part, and I think Mom should know that. Well, you know me, Pop. 
I'm pretty broad-minded on things like this. Well, you don't have to be. Well, possibly if I got to Mom and could sort of in, in, insinuate that you'd be glad if one of the other men had the part, I might sort of pave the way for a, a re reconciliation. What the... Uh... Reconciliation? Oh, this has cut Mom deeper than you think, Pop. Okay. I'll show you I'm doing the right thing. I'm throwing up the whole thing. I'm going over to Homer's and explain the whole thing to him and insist that he takes the part. I'm not selfish. <laughs> Once a man does a thing like that, a woman ain't got an ounce of respect for a man. Well, well, now, honey, it, it hurts me here to see you crying your pretty eyes out. My eyes ain't pretty. Oh, they are to me. When I was uh, looking at that girl, I, I mean, looking uh, past her, I just thought to myself, uh, she ain't the woman Martha is. Well, it's all right. You can't blame it on to Oliver, neither. He tried to get you not to take the part. Well, honey, I mostly wanted to make the show a success, so people will say, look, that's Martha Meister. The wife of that fellow who made such a big hit in the show. I don't think of myself when it comes to respect. And poor Mary. Her face just went white. Well, now, honey, look, when you cry like that, my heart just bleeds for you. I want to take you in my arms and kiss away each little tear. Oh, why, sure, I wouldn't trade you for Antoinette if they threw in the cafe with her. Well, you'd make three of her. How do you mean? Well, I just mean that you're you're too big to oh. worry about things like this. Oh, now, come now. Come on now. Now, blow hard. Now, here, here's my handkerchief. Well, I don't care. I'm a good woman. I am. <gasps> oh, oh, there, there now. Ah, uh, that was fine. Now, just dry your tears, and, and we'll just be like we was when we was married first off. Yep, our wedding supper at my house. We didn't have no meat that night, neither. Oh, Oh, me, oh, my, oh. Hey, quick, Martha. Hey, your eyes are red clear down to your chin. Oh. Come on, dry them up. Hurry. Oh, Homer, how I misunderstood you. I've been a fool. Oh, it's Oliver. Come on in. I just wanted to come over and fix it for you. Oh, no, no, Dag Nabbit. I just got her quieted Who down. Who is that, Homer? Oh, it's oh, Oliver. Me. Hiya, Marthy. I'm feeling much better, Mr. Anderson. Well, I just wanted to come over and straighten out any trouble I caused. Uh, yeah, 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 you didn't cause yes, none. Yes, yes, I did. And to show you how big I am, Homer, you can have the part all by yourself. I'd rather have everyone friendly than to play the part myself. Homer don't want the part. Who don't? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Martha's right. When a feller's got a good woman like I have, his place is home right alongside of her. Mm, Homer's a good man. He is? Uh, I mean, yeah, of course he is. But Antoinette just insists Homer does the part, and I'm stepping down. Uh, leave the room, Marthy. What I'm going to tell Oliver Anderson ain't fit for your pretty ears. Now, Homer, don't uh, have no trouble in the house. Uh, I'll tell you one thing, Anderson. Oh, you darn fool, I just got everything straightened out, and you have to bring up that gal's name again. But look, Antoinette wants you to play the part, Homer. Oh, ho, 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 oh, me. Oh, she does, eh? Yeah. Hmm. Well, now, uh, I might be able to work something out. Uh, tell her not to give up yet. Okay. I'm glad everyone's happy. Yeah. And uh, tell Antonetti I'll drop by the cafe later. If I see her, I will. Yeah. Oh, yucky, hicky, hacky, dolly. Oh, yucky, hacky, dolly. Hip, hip. Oh, yeah, hacky, hacky, dolly. Homer Meister. Huh? Hmm. You oh. ain't fooling me one bit. Why did that Oliver Anderson want to whisper to you in the hall? Why, he, he, he was sorry about it. Sorry nothing. You're as bad as he is. Oh, now, pet, there's tears in your pretty eyes And again. there's a cot in the garage, too, and I hope you freeze out there tonight. My dear, the whole story is made up of a tissue of lies. Martha Meister can't see that far. But Free Baron, she wouldn't lie about it. It's that Anderson. But Martha told me she saw the three men rush toward her. I know you're impulsive, Free Baron, but in public that way. Listen, pet, <laughs> Oliver and Homer were trapping each other to death to put her cape on while I was standing on a box. Standing on a box? Why? That's where Anderson made me stand. And I hate him for it. Why, darling, I couldn't see through that Antoinette. She didn't fool me. I had her number in no time. What was the number? Crestview 334. I resent that, my dear. You're the only woman in my life. 
the star upon which I look for guidance at every waking moment. Then you didn't see the light in Antoinette? She was just a flash in the pad, my dear. Well, maybe I was foolish, Free Baron, and, and I think you're a very fine person to explain. I'll never distrust you again. As it should be, my pet. Hmm. Who could this be? I hope it isn't who I think it is. I was afraid of this. Let me in, Briggs. This whole thing is my fault. The whole thing is a closed issue, Anderson. No, 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 it isn't. When I said neighbors should be friendly and unselfish, I meant it. Briggs, the part is yours. What's this I hear about Free Baron being unselfish? Oh, hi, Millie. I was just telling Briggsy that I'm turning the part over to him. After I saw him act, I knew I was an amateur. Why, the way he looked into her eyes, it seemed as though he meant every word he breathed. Anderson! And I don't try to be modest, Free Baron. I just want the show to be a success. And I know that with you in there, it will be. You and Antoinette. Yes, sir. Good night. Anderson, I'll never forget this. That's all right, Briggsy. So, you were standing on a box. But you weren't up in front. I, I... You lied to me, Free Baron. Uh, where's Mom? She'll be out in a minute, Pop. Sit down. Thanks. Mom and I went over this whole thing. Well, how did it come out? Well, she admits she was a bit hasty, and I admitted that you went about it in the wrong way. I went about it in the wrong way? Now, look, Pop, everyone's happy again. If you'll just drop the whole thing, I know it's blown over. Well, I can be just as big about it as she can. Of course you can, Pop. I never got a chance to explain, Junior. That's one of the main reasons the whole thing is blown over. Uh, Mary, come here and sit down a minute. Let's not be childish, Oliver. Junior, have you finished your homework? Uh, no, Mom, not yet. A couple of the problems are kind of tough. I'll help you with them. I wish you wouldn't. His grades are bad enough now. Oh. Now run on to your room and do your work, Junior. Yeah, now maybe I can get some of my own work finished. Don't think I don't appreciate what you've done, Junior. Uh uh. Remember, I suggested we drop it. Good night. I'll be up soon. Uh, you know, I'm glad to see the way Junior is taking a hold. He's alert and smart. Doesn't look at his shoes when people talk to him. And that's because his mind is free mm. and bound up with other things besides himself. Oh, well, took me a long time to learn that. Antoinette was here. Oh, she was? She's a rather nice person. Oh, of course she is. She was terribly hurt about what Martha thought about her. I don't know why. Poor kid became so confused she forgot her accent. She did? I think it's a shame the way you men treated her. Me? Well, I didn't say three words That's to her. That's what I mean. You let her take the blame for the whole thing, when all you had to do was explain it for her. Well, I tried to explain, Mary. I... Only to me. And I didn't think it was worth another thought. I didn't mind Antoinette a bit. I know you didn't. And I never thought for a moment that you did. Well, of course I didn't. But to be with Martha when she found Homer there, and crying at the top of her voice all the way home. Huh? Oliver Anderson, the things you get me into. I didn't make her cry, did Neither I? Neither did I. But I hate to have people staring at us on the street. Have you no thought for my feelings? Oh. Uh-uh, Mom. Remember what we said? Go to bed! Look, I don't see why you take it out on him, Mary. I've never spent such a miserable evening in my life. I'm trying to straighten it out. So you'll have a nice, bright outlook for tomorrow. You're the one who'd better have a different outlook tomorrow. And don't speak to me again tonight. Huh? Open the garage door. It's Oliver. Don't let him in here. Now, now, wait a minute, Briggs. Oh, uh, sounds like distress to me. Never turn away your brother. Thanks, Homer. We were just discussing you, Anderson. I suppose you know that Millicent insisted I leave our fireside for the night. That's your lookout, Briggs, not mine. Oh, now, now, come on, fellas. Look here now, no fighting. Well? This garage is big enough for the three of us now. You were discussing me, you say, Briggs. Yes. I know a man who, who tends strictly to his own business, who's looking for a house just like yours. Would you like to sell it? Oh, I see. How do you feel, Homer? Well, well, of course, I, I'm not leaning one way or t'other, but I wouldn't sell unless I got my price if I was you, Oliver. I won't. I yeah. mean, it's not for sale. And now, if you have no more to say, get in that front seat of the car, Briggs. 
I'm sleeping on that cot tonight. Anderson Family is written by Howard Swart, directed by Herb Litton, and features Dick Lane as Oliver, Louise Arthur as Mary, Walter Tetley as Junior, and Herbert Rollinson as Homer. Others in the cast were Jacqueline DeWitt, Jenny Johnson, and George Peroni. Music by Gordon Kibbe, sound effects by Ray Ehrmanborn, and your announcer is Ken Peters. The Anderson Family is a Hollywood broadcaster's production, transcribed from Hollywood. (laughs) 